Hi, and welcome. Yes, I've been gone again for a while. I planned on doing lots of art in October, and I got started, and then um, the virus hit us. We're good, we're fine. Uh, we got through it fine, it wasn't that, but then once we were over that, I broke my headset. Bad. And um, no headset, no sound. This is kind of a replacement, but it's an old set and it cracks. I, I'm sorry if you can hear the, the cracking of it. Every time I move, it cracks in one ear. It's, it's plastic against plastic. It's a very annoying sound. But, yeah, we're, I'm back. We're working on the headset situation. We will get another set, a better one, eventually. And, um, yeah, I want to talk about all these brush pens that I got, especially the watercolor ones. I jumped on the bandwagon for those at the end of nine, uh, 2017, like in December or something. It, it, it was a big thing at the time, uh, I think, in the, at least in the coloring community, which I was kind of part of still back then. But it was at the end of my coloring career. And so I bought some Tombow ABTs. No, sorry. Let's start with a start. The first ones I bought was the Fibralo brush from Karen Dash. Then a month later, at the beginning of 18, I bought the Koi coloring brush pens. And I bought the full set of 48. The only thing that's not in here is a blender, but I got a blender over on the side here. I forgot to take it out and I got a blender more. So I got everything you can get from the Koi ones. Then the Tombow came a lot later because I was too cheap to actually buy any sets of these. But I bought these open stock in, yeah, mid-19, summer, spring, something like that. There is, I had one more, a Prussian blue that dried up for me. I'm not sure why it did. It could be that I didn't put the cap on right. I think that's the case. Um, then... Mid 20, I got these ones. And somewhere in between, I think I've started with the Ecolines, maybe early 19 or somewhere through 18. My Ecoline pens I got when they came out, and I, I haven't looked up when that particularly was. But I built on the collection, so they, they're different age. So the point of this video is how good has the shelf life been on, on these? Because um, I have used them on and off. And I want to say this is not a brand bash or anything. This is more a... Is this something you should buy and leave on your shelf? And... Uh, let's just see how, how each one fared um, because some of them are not as good as they were when they came let's just say that so let's start from the beginning um, this is going to be kind of a long video so grab yourself something comfy if that's a cup of tea or coffee then go for it you can pause the video while you do that I'm not going to wait for you so, Fibralo, Karen Dash, um, they have two types of Fibralos. They have these ones, and there's 15 colors in the series. And then they have one that is just like a regular fiber nib, um, also watercolor brush. That is also called Fibralo. This is called Fibralo brush. So this was the first ones I got. I got kind of f 
fascinated because there was another artist who spoke warmly about them. Brush. So the black one here is okay. It works. The color is as it should be. The yellow, I don't know if you can see, but it's nice and good, and the brush works as it should. Well, it shows up, but only just. This one is like an apricot color. And the brush on these is fairly firm and easy for me to use. I am a klutz with soft brush pens. I have no idea why, because I can use a soft brush with a watercolor, but soft brush pens is just not my thing. So this far, all of the pens have worked just fine. The common theme here is brush pens, and they're all dye-based meaning they, there's no pigment in here. Dye is, is a colored solution um, that is not suspended but dissolved in water. And that makes a big difference between pigments, which is basically particles that is suspended in water or other carrying agents also called binders so you can get pigment in acrylic and watercolor gouache oils stuff like that so this far all of these have been just fine i'll try and water one or two of them out in a bit I quite like these. They um, you can make details with them, and I like the color selection. And you can mix the colors too. So if you think you're missing some colors, you can mix your way into most things. And the good thing about the brush tips is they don't tear into the paper like fiber tips tend to do. So let's just try and take the black. How well they, they lift off the paper depends on the paper. This is a Craft X, uh, Canson XL watercolor paper. Um, it's a little abs too absorbent for these. But that's not the point today. So, all of my Fibrillo brush, the, my oldest set, all works. So, I had a pen that I took out for starters. Oh well, let me just grab the flag again. So, oh, okay. If you run out of a color here, you can buy it open stock if you can find someone who carries it. So the next ones, and that will take a lot longer because I got 48 colors. That is the Koi ones from uh, Sakura. I love the colors of these. The color selection is great. The pens themselves I like as well. But let's see if they all still work. They are not cheap. I paid a little over 50 euros for them when I bought them back in 18. I just checked on Amazon Germany and they sell for 62 or 63 now. And, and you can also buy these open stock if you run out of something. Absolute gorgeous selection. Um, now I'm back missing a pen again. I think I'll just keep this. So these are Koi. 
coloring brush pen. So they have a fairly big brush, much bigger than the Fibrato tip. And it's also a bit softer. But you can still get some fine lines if you want to. The yellow, a deeper yellow, it's all okay. So far, so good. This one looks like it's lost its point if we compare to that orange we just had. And I can guarantee you that is not a color I use very much. Pale orange. It feels dry, but it gives color. It looks more pink than, than orange. So I'd say this is not as good as it used to be. So let me make a pile of those up there. Here's another one. Quite okay. Maybe a bit softer than it used to be, but still absolutely usable. Okie dokie. This looks maybe a little fussy on the end, but that is definitely a color I have used on a regular basis. So it's frayed a bit on the end, so it's not 100% but usable, but still. One of the reasons why I don't use these pens so much anymore is because I tend to grab light fast stuff more than these. They're bright, they're fantastic, they mix well, they're, there's really nothing bad to say about them in terms of how they are to use, but not light fast. And uh, I have people who sometimes come and pick up some of my art these days. And um, I hate when they go, oh, I like this. And then they take one of my drawings made with not light fast stuff. Now, my sister took one of my doodles that was made with, I think these or something similar. And we, I sprayed it. Oh, this is like super soft now. It didn't used to be. There's lots of ink in it and it works, but it's... The tip is compromised. Yeah, so my sister took one of my doodles and we have sprayed it with fixative with a UV filter in my Schminke General. This one looks frayed too. I don't know if you can see it on camera. And it's overly soft too. It feels like it's going bad. But I still like them and I still pick them up, do doodles and stuff with on uh, different people, different things. These are good if you do, oops, that one and that one was okay. If you do stuff where it doesn't matter if it's light fast, I scan some of my work too. So it's not strictly necessary that everything, oh, can you see how this look? It looks like it's molded, but it's not. It's the ink that's starting to crystallize on the tip. And there, there is ink, but this is useless. It can't make lines or anything. It is just completely 
not good anymore. I could probably scribble the ink out and then paint it onto the page, but since it's such a pale color, I think it will just totally disappear. There's another one. This is also kind of soft. It's usable, but not super good. So most of them still works. And I knew this, my blender is totally messed up. It's also disintegrated. And, and that is not crystals, that is just the nip being ruined. And I think this is even my second blender. I, I think my first one disintegrated pretty fast. So, next package, that comes in two packages. But it's getting soft. Now, I've had these for five years, and I don't know if they have changed the material they, they use for the, the tips. I'm willing to give them a try. There is one that is kind of new, and it's a light sky blue. I think it's this one. It's not this one because this is also going bad. It is one of these blues. Aqua blue maybe? Oh, this feels quite new. So am I mad that they are like this? No, not really. As I said, five years is a long time. I should have used them up within five years. So what am I thinking about this? I think it is something you should buy if you know you're going to use it. And um, not put it on a shelf. This is also getting kind of soft, but it's okay. That uh, the Fibralo lasted. I'm not surprised. That is current ash. Oh, this one already out of the cap. It's looking weird. So I will still recommend the Koi brush pens, but uh, buy them and use them, and maybe not buy the full set unless you're absolutely sure you're going to use all the colors, or m most of the colors. As I said, they're not cheap, so make sure you, you use them. This is definitely on my list of things I, I have to use more, get them used up. And I'm not going to replace them because when I didn't use them in five years, it's not really a point of having them. I know I'm not going to give them away or donate them or something because I do not give away or donate stuff that is not good, that is not perfect. I do not want to discourage anybody's artistic joy by giving them lousy, non-working art materials. 
the stuff I give away is good stuff. The stuff that I might not still not use, but it has to be good. It has to be usable. Broken pens? No. Pens that, that doesn't really work? Oh, here's another bad one. No. Um, and if, if you're at a place in life where you need, where you're dependent on donated stuff, I'm quite sure you need something to pick you up and not to bring you down. And non-working art materials bring people down. Especially if they're beginners and just starting, kids, new, uh, newbies. If stuff doesn't work, they blame it on themselves, not on the art supply. And yeah, I know people say, oh, don't dump the dump on the art supplies. But yeah, if, if things doesn't work as it should, I dump on it. I, I, I'm, I'm saying it as it is. So out of 48 colors plus a blender, there is five, nine, nine colors and a blender that is no longer really usable they the nips have gone bad or is going bad some of these can still be used but i have a very short window to do so before they go bad i actually tested these like two months ago and there was only one that didn't work now we we got this many so i have not long time to to use them look at the colors they, they're fantastic they, um, I, I really liked using them when I did use them, or the times I have used them. So, um, it's not a bad supply. They're not, I don't think it says watercolor anywhere on them. Active, fine, medium, or bold brush strokes. Durable tip, quickly springs back. To original shape, stroke after stroke, dye-based ink, blend easily to create multitude of color hues, compact pen, special blender pen. Yeah, it doesn't say watercolor anywhere on them, but I've seen people use them as, as watercolor pens, but they do not necessarily dissolve as easy as the ones that is marked as watercolor pens so koi pens buy them use them don't let them lie around and, um, Nineteen Equiline and Tombow. Let's just take these Tombow ABT. These are the most expensive ones I got. Um, aren't they called ABT? So as I said, I bought these open stock and I quite like them. What I don't like about them is really the price. But if they last better than the Kois, then we got maybe a point. I'm just going to test the, the brush pens because I've never had a problem with, with fiber tips going bad over time. Okay. Here we got crystallization and leakage and stuff. This doesn't look good, but it works. This is something that can happen with these dye inks um, over time. In general, buy them, use them. Don't let them sit around. This started off a little dry, but came back. And the tip feels fine. These are probably, along with the uh, Echolines, the most famous of all of these 
and lots of people swear by them and I can understand why again it's just the price that gives me hiccups so the the leak ink there on the brown was more or less just a cosmetic thing this far and this was a pale yellow so it is supposed to be hard to tell So, these are okay. Okay, let's just try and activate one. This is the one that has to solve the best this far. I understand why those are somebody's favorite. I just don't have very good accessibility to them. And again, price. It's sometimes a problem with imported stuff. So let's try the Stadler dual double ended. Oh, that's a long name. Whoops, dip my finger in that. That is a super long name. Okay, I got the 18 set. You can get two sets. One with 18 and one with 36. And they are not available open stock. And they are part of the Design Journey series that was has been out. What? Three years, two years, three years, I don't know. So these were fresh when I got them. And they got a fiber tip in one end and a brush in the other. This looks good. Yep, works. That one felt a little soft, but it doesn't matter because it has that fine detail tip in the other end. So these are two and a half years old. The brush is quite soft on these. Wrong end. And yeah, I'm just taking them in the random order here. Some of the tips is starting to feel soft like the Koi brushes, so I don't think these last forever either. And this one looks a little fussy on the top there, but it works. Feels maybe a little bit dry too, but it's one of my favorite colors, so it might be I have used it up. Oops. We need a dark spot for that. There. Totally fuzzy tip with crystallized whatever. But the color looks okay and as soon as I started using it those crystals went away. Now it looks okay again. So these definitely, this is also having some crystallization here at, along the top of the tip. They don't have a long shelf life, that's for sure. So, but they are also the least expensive of the lot.
Colors are all good so far. Still usable, but I can tell I need to get them moving. This is also an art supply I will not replace because I got other favorites. I prefer stuff I can um, get open stock. These were bought for review purpose. And I'm still standing by saying that I think they're good. But buy them and use them. Don't buy them and store them. <coughs> so the next ones is my Echo line brush. And I got the regular ones. Um, let's start with the, this one. It looks okay. The tip feels okay. Let's see if we can blend out something here. It still works. I don't ever use blenders. I use water. So, but it it's there. So big brush pen, and this one's a very pale. It's like a pastel yellow or something like that. Yeah, pastel yellow. And I can't tell you the age of each individual color because, as I said, I I got them all over a span of time. I think I've used up once, one or two. I actually dently didn't put the lid on one, so I've replaced that. And that's the beauty of open stock stuff. You don't have to go and get a brand new set of pens just because there's something with one of them. I had one orange that I had to throw away. I don't have a orange. I have a light orange and I think this is a dark orange. That's a vermilion. Yeah, I don't have the one that's just called orange anymore because that crystallization stuff you saw on one of the other pens happened to that. It was just totally fuzzy and it dried out really quickly and it was useless and the tip was destroyed. But that's really the only one I've had a problem with. The, the rest here looks good. And these are used on a regular basis. So these are my go-to. And I'll definitely keep on having Ecoline brush pens in my stash. Uh, those are the Fibrato. The others I'm not going to bother with. Maybe some ABTs if I find a color I really, really want. But... Um, yeah, availability and price is, is big things for me. Of course, things have to work first and foremost, but between things that does work and I do like, then the next step is, can I get it and what is the price of it? That's, that's a big thing. These are... Some of these are really, really old. Uh, I'm quite sure this mahogany is, is one of the first ones I got. And uh, as I say, I think I've gotten them in the beginning of 19. And then added on a regular basis since. Because they, they came out with, well, I don't know, what, 20, 20 colors first. Then they added some more, and then they added some more, and some more, and some more. So now there's 50-some colors, I think. And they're all gorgeous. So zero problems, no soft brushes, no 
major anything this far. There's a little bit of fuss on this one, a little bit of crystallization. So how often do we need to use them? I have no idea. I have no idea, but you should probably use them within a year or two of buying. I don't know how long any of these last if you use them like continuously and use them as your main art supply. I have and I don't keep track of <laughs> those things. So yeah. So in terms of how they have lasted me, I'd say the Fibralo the best. Next up the Ecoline brush pens along with the Tumbos. And, um, I'd say that's about the same. One dried out and I think that was my fault. One or two of these dried out, likely also my fault. I had one of each crystallized but only one really going broke, uh, being broke and uh, broken of these, but also have a lot more Ecoline pens than the Tombow, so I'll give that. Uh, I'm a little disappointed in the Koi pens, I have to say. I don't think I can complain because I had them sitting for five years, but then again, the, the Fibralos also sat for five years, so... Mm. Stadler, it's okay. Um, I consider the the design journey stuff to be kind of entrance level stuff where you can go in you can try it out and if you like it it's easy to get something that is better but i don't have any super negatives to say about this they they work as they should but it's very clear that these brush pens they don't have a super long shelf life so that was my go on on these I wanted to share this because this is the kind of thing that does not necessarily always show up on um, on YouTube it's always much brand new stuff first impressions and sometimes somebody comes and says, okay are these worth it X number of years after it and um, I think they're still all worth it I just wish I had used the coloring, the, the Koi pens more because I would like have, have liked rather to to wear them out than, than have this happen. And let's just say, be honest, some of these are worse than others. That There are some that I threw in here just because they were getting kind of soft, but I kind of know what happens when they start to go soft. That's when they end up being like that or worse thank you for watching please like subscribe and come back i got lots of stuff coming up here uh, i have new stuff and interesting stuff i think at least take care